first thing I want to touch on is is album sales for artists and something that you kind of I don't know if you I don't know if I would use it as hold against but something that you bring up often is the idea of like bundles being a negative when we're talking about like quote unquote like first week sales when it goes into a high profile artist sale yeah. a good a great example of this is T Taylor Swift is the queen of this and then another great example is T Travis Scott is the king of it so I guess what my first question to you would be is why do you view that as like a negative when you're talking about like album sales? Okay. Great question. And this actually leads me to a tweet okay. that I just saw the other day. Um, I might saw it today, actually. Not someone I like, but I do respect his opinion. He's one of the largest independent artists in the world. Russ. Yeah. Right. Did you see that tweet he had? No. what he said? He posted a tweet and said, all these online internet numbers on streaming, album sales, they're all fake. And you can't sell out a stadium. Where are the real life ticket sales? Mm -hmm. Right? So I don't discredit album sales. It's a great metric to go on. Right? I think Sexy Red's album just sold 23,000 copies. Right? Something very minuscule, which is super ass seeing as she probably has like three or four million followers mm -hmm. and she can only sell 23,000 copies of her album. The thing about album sales, I just, I don't let it justify to me what is good music. Mm -hmm. That's fair. So, so I guess, I guess to build on top of that, like for me, like when I look at like bundles getting sold, like being able to move like a physical product and they, they have ways around it. Like Travis Scott throws t-shirts with it, hats, this, that, and the third Taylor Swift does like journals, calendars, who, who the fuck knows what she does. I guess like. I guess I almost like view it as like more impressive because if you're going to sit there and you're able to have like your diehard fans, like buy something like a physical, something physical for them to have forever, like a, like an album, a record, wh whatever that may be a t-shirt like that to me is almost more impressive than just having somebody stream your music on Spotify. And like, that's probably, I can tell you one thing, nobody's buying a sexy red CD. So like probably all those numbers are just flat from streaming. So what, what do you think of that? I disagree. I disagree solely from the premise is the only people whose bundles we're really talking about who needs, not, not, let me not say needs bundles. They don't need bundles. But if you look at like a Travis Scott, you look at like a Kanye West, you look at these people, they're arguably bigger in the fashion world, right? So it's easier for them to package in something they're bigger at i.e. clothing, shirts, merch, X, Y, and Z with their music to make their music seem bigger than what it is. Whereas a Taylor Swift is going to sell buttloads of albums or whatever, no matter what. Her bundling and stuff, she'll sell it regardless. When that, when you when we talk about Travis Scott, he's, I don't know, one of the main faces of Nike. Yeah. Right? So for him to bundle in something, it's really not that impressive for him to add that to his album sales. I, I thought I forget what the exact number is and I can Google it real quick, but I know that he, he broke like the, um, like the amount of record, like records, physical records sold like ever. That's been like long standing for like 40 years. So just, just like I said, I think that like being able to push like real product as an artist, like as long as well as your music, because at the end of the day, if the music also wasn't good, we probably wouldn't see that product getting pushed as well. So I think it kind of goes a little bit hand in hand. I just think it's kind of a, a cherry on top feeding the fans a little bit more because me personally, I know that if Drake came out with like, like it, let's just say he packaged some sort of like, I like his store, like his brand of October's very own. I, I have some hoodies from there, some high quality stuff, some shit super expensive. I think that if there was some way to intertwine and incorporate like him putting out an album with like an exclusive like OVO thing, like it would be a smash hit. And the reason that it would be a smash hit is one, the product will be sweet and really cool. And then two, the music would be really good. So I, I kind of view it as going hand in hand a little bit. I agree with that take. I just don't think that a lot of, I just don't like that that's added in because in our conversation let's give some backstory you were justifying the validity or the excellence uh or the magnitude of an of an artist's global reach by saying album sales when they're not purely album sales they're selling a product outside of just music whereas when you compare it to someone that's selling just music it's kind of it's kind of apples and oranges 
I, I guess I, I, like I said, maybe, maybe me and you view it a little bit differently, but I do view it in hand in hand.